Welcome, my friends, to the Level Up Corner podcast. I am Wizzo, a professional DM of too many years. I also run levelupcorner.com, write a whole bunch of stuff, and if you're interested in, the, in a game by a professional dungeon master, eh, you can come to me. I am also joined by the beautiful Sherry. Yes, hello everybody. Welcome to the Level Up Corner podcast. Um, you might notice something a bit different about our setup today. <laughs> well, the big thing is that our friend Travis is no longer with us. Oh, that's it. Didn't, didn't even no. <laughs> oh, you kidding. forgot about that Kyle? oh yeah it was it was a minor thing that's all yeah so um he has taken a step back from the level up corner so at this point it is just me and wizzo um but the cool thing is we're actually a married couple so this dynamic kind of works out for us anyway we're good at bickering yeah and you're gonna hear so much of that on the podcast <laughs> Or at least no, disagreeing really. with each other, that's for sure. Yeah, there, there'll be a healthy amount of disagreement, I think, but that's uh, kind of what makes this work, I think. It'd be a pretty boring podcast if we just agreed with each other the whole time. Yes. Please don't kick me to the corner. <laughs> Good husband. Yes, yes, programmed. No, no, no. Um, before we get into the actual topic, how about we talk about what we've done this week or what we've kind of been up to since the last podcast episode? Yeah, there's been a lot that's happened. I mean, it's been a couple weeks since we've recorded. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, just big changes with the company in terms of who's working for us. I would say we went down to a duo instead of a trio. Um. I mean, I think the big thing is we've kind of rekindled our YouTube channel. That's true. That is definitely true. We've also started a series, of Level Up DM, which is about... Well, it's um, Level Up Corner. It's well, not a series. Mm, okay. Good point. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The funny thing is, Wizzo's the CEO, but I really don't think he knows what goes on around here. So just, maybe we need to get better at communication. I just work a lot and make a lot of content and you make it look pretty. So Right. Yes. And together we might actually succeed at building a business. True, true. And I'm also a little frazzled for running six games a week, so that uh that that does kind of make you go a little bit fraying at the seams, as well as trying to constantly improve better maps, better techniques, and a whole bunch of other stuff. It it's a lot. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, Wizzo is a professional dungeon master, for those of you who don't know. Because I'm just going to assume a lot of our audience is new since this podcast is pretty new. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what Wizzo's doing most of the week. And I'm, well, at this point, I'm editing videos and managing the blog. So, you wrote an article this week that's going to be published on Friday. What did you write about? That is a good question. What did I write about, editor? You it's, just it's finished test. it like yesterday. It's a test. No, no. Um, <laughs> uh, what I wrote about, uh, let's see here. Put me on the spot, love. Uh, it shouldn't be that difficult. Okay. I have no memory. <laughs> well, it's going to get published this week, so. So I expect you to edit it and do a great job as I've forgotten. Out of sight, out of mind. Oh, there we are. Oh, that's why. It was a long one. Uh, the best D&D 5e class That's why you couldn't remember. List. Yeah, with the greatest impact. So it goes over uh, D&D class tier list. We kind of went over that in the previous podcast when we had Travis as well. But this is me going over the uh, classes on a tier list. The base 13, not including Bloodhunter and, what, and, and the Mercer stuff. With a more critical eye based upon mechanics the ability well the mechanics in combat how much of an impact they have there their options and everything else how they are able to affect the game socially which is out of combat and how they are able to uh, have a game impact which while those two seemed like a little bit of a game impact this is more about changing the game or making the dm have to focus on your class rather than character and it's difficult some classes you'll find out are very dependent upon the player to the point where it can go from a i think it was at points b to s rank or like c to a rank like there's there's a good jump for some of them 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. So for uh, those of you who wanted to know more about Kyle's tier rankings, uh, that'll be a good article for you to check out. And by the time this podcast gets uploaded, actually, it's going to get uploaded on the same day that you upload the article. Ah. So that, that actually works out really well. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. So that's kind of what we've been working on mm -hmm. um, since the last podcast. Just typical stuff. And I mean, look, Kyle and I both have, well, not full time, but I don't know, maybe like 30 hour a week job. So um, yeah, the professional yeah, we don't work. is mine. <laughs> Right, exactly. So we don't do this full time yet, hopefully soon, but there's only realistically so much that we can even get done uh, every week, but we do our best. Yeah, that's all we can really do. I have been uh, making sure that my games are on Twitch, though, so if you are interested, you can watch them on Twitch, and if you're just on Twitter wanting to see little blurbs or highlights, I try to make sure that the next day... There is always a highlight from the session the night before. Yeah. Oh, another thing. Uh, for those of you who like the game StarCraft, Kyle's been streaming that too. Yeah. Yeah. I've been also... Uh, <laughs> so this is good for anyone who's been watching me on StarCraft. I've been doing really bad in the last hour. And I think it's because we were changing our... Well, I was changing my diet to where I'm fasting for much longer and there was just a mental haze in that last hour it was like i'm moving my keys or or i or i'd be like i know he's gonna come in and drop on my base oh i didn't do anything like <laughs> stuff like that but I, I it's starting to uh evaporate so i won't have as much of a mental haze anymore and i'll get back into doing better doing better that's for sure and that's for those people who know about starcraft i'm not going into details right, exactly this is D &D. i mean we are a D, D business but i mean we have other hobbies yeah as i well, know so. surprisingly we exist yeah. outside of D. &D. <laughs> i know we have lives outside of this we well, have board that games right? outside of this exactly yeah like more games well i mean isn't that the spice of life games uh, you're a nerd <laughs> Oh, I am definitely high up there on the on the nerd tier list then. Yeah, same here. Yeah. All right, well, why don't we uh, jump into the topic for today? Oh, yeah, that's right. We're talking about something. All right. Yes, Dungeons and Dragons related. <laughs> and what is the topic? So we are talking about how to choose a D&D &D 5e class. Mm. And we want this to be a useful conversation for new players and old players alike. See, I, I usually have it along the lines of the experienced player trying to uh, help guide a newer player into a class by figuring out what they want and then letting them play that class. So I actually have a system for doing this that I went over years ago. I can try to recall it if you wish. Well, we don't have forever. I, I won't and take I know forever. how bad your memory is. It's... It won't take forever. I, I made I, I even made a little diagram, so it, it makes it makes a bit more sense. I, oh, okay. Yes, yes. So the first diagram is, and this is if they understand what D and D is and have an idea. You ask them in order to narrow down the class, do you prefer magic or martial? Like do you want to swing with your weapons and be someone who fights with bows, arrows, swords, shields and stuff, or do you want to be a person who fights with magic and then they give an answer so you've already made a split as to what they want but how would someone decide that well you ask them like what sounds cooler do when, when you play the game do you want to be someone who focuses more on like the martial melee combat or potentially ranged with bows like using actual physical weapons or do you want to be someone who casts spells and beguiles your enemies or, and, or heals your friends. Try to make it. Uh, try to uh, make sure that they are very different by martial being what martial is, or spells being more open ended with what spells are. That also lets you give an idea just upon that little pitch as to if they want to have a more basic play style or if they want to really be creative. Okay. So that's um, that's, that's the first point. Of divergence. I think that's a good point, but I don't think you should make a decision just what on. Just based on what you think is cooler. 
Well, the, then, then we but, get then we, we get won't down get to into that, right? Yeah, yeah, and then we get down to narrowing it. So then you ask, well, uh, if they say they went martial, like, do you want to still have a little bit of magic, or just say screw magic and just do weapons? The same goes with magic. If you go uh, into the magic category, you say, well, I know you like magic, but do you want to involve weapons with it a lot, or do you want to uh, just say screw weapons and stick fully with magic? This already differentiates if they want to be a full spellcaster, a full just martial class, a martial class that has maybe one third spellcasting, or a uh, class that's like a half caster, possibly a paladin or or a ranger, something along those lines. You're kind of like pushing them towards where they want with this, or even subclasses. You're getting an idea, a feel for what they want. So that's that, that's yeah. those two questions. We've already narrowed it down a lot. The next, yeah, um, mm-hmm. I would say though, when you're dealing with a new player, that you're probably not going to recommend every single class. Oh no no no! You're narrowing it down. So the third question you ask is dependent upon if they go for magic or martial. If let's say if it's magic, then you say, do you want to support and heal your allies and buff them? Or do you want to be the the highlight? Do you want to be the one who casts the fireball or or traps an enemy? And with this, you're narrowing down classes even further. You're narrowing it down if they want to be like, let's say, a support cleric. Because when they say, oh, I want to buff people, they don't just say, I want to buff. They say, I like the idea of healing and supporting my friends. Already you've got like bard, cleric, or maybe druid you've narrowed it down to. If they say, no, I want to cast fireball. Well... <laughs> you're probably <laughs> narrowing it down to like a sorcerer maybe wizard but probably more like a sorcerer and then with marshall the third question you would ask is do you want to be a tank the one who protects your allies a damage the person who goes out and just kills all the enemies or do you want to be something cool do you want to jump off the walls do you want to be the person who could do a whole bunch of other stealth uh, a whole bunch of other stuff stealthing into the enemy sidelines which do you prefer and uh, and uh, then uh, with the third question, you try to get them to um, say which two they prefer in order. The reason why you want to say two is, let's say they want to deal damage and they want to be cool. Well, how do they want to be cool? They say, well, I want to deal a lot of damage and I want to go and stealth behind people and assassinate them. You, you already know what class they are at this point. They want to be a rogue. They probably want to be an assassin rogue. If they say that, well, I want to tank, but I want to do some cool other stuff on the side, they probably want to be a paladin because they have auras, different spells, and they can tank. If they want to tank and deal damage, well, then they might want to be a fighter because then they can tank and deal damage. And with their previous questions, you can narrow it down even further. Again, if they want, if they don't want magic, then you can push them towards fighter. If they do want magic, maybe towards a paladin or ranger if they want to just damage and be cool with some uh, with, with a decent amount of magic you combine the aspects of these questions to formulate what your new player is is kind of thinking about what they actually like and this won't tell you the exact class that they prefer but it will point you in a pretty good direction okay i think that's fair um but you need to have a dm that knows what questions to ask and I think a lot of players honestly just don't know what they want. Like they see all these different options. Like maybe they don't even know if they want magic versus melee and they don't know how to really weigh the pros and the cons or what that's even going to look like. That's, so that's true. That's part that's of the true. reason why we're having this conversation. Yep. And like that's what about the players who don't know what they want? Yeah. Yeah. This was more for the players who have a vague idea of what D and D is with magic and stuff, but don't really know, but you're correct. There are players who go in and, and are roped in by their uncles or brothers and sisters to play D and D, and they have no idea. So, yeah, maybe um, it all sounds good. Maybe it all sounds good. So, how would you address that person? Well, um, I would consider that they are a new player, so I would probably only recommend certain classes to them, like the easier classes that would be less overwhelming. So maybe a fighter or a barbarian. Or, um, in terms of magic, I mean, what's really straightforward? Maybe a, a sorcerer? Maybe a warlock? Because it has a lot of flavor? Um, maybe they have kind of, like, an archetype in mind? I don't even know if I'm saying that word right. Archetype. archetype. Yeah. 
Oh, they have an archetype. Maybe they, maybe in they mind, have like then. an archetype yeah. in mind. Maybe they're like, oh, you know, pirates are cool. I want to play that. So that would make it really easy. Swashbuckler Rogue. Like, you know, Swashbuckler Rogue. There you go. But um, I would only recommend easier classes if they have literally never played Actually, a TTRPG. I have. I have a pirate wizard who has burned down every boat that he's been on. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, not not a good pirate, Great. but he's an interesting one. Yeah, um, I highly that disagree goes, upon that sounds this. Sounds awful. Yeah, yeah. But do you recommend the hard classes for a new player? No, no. I, I would say don't restrict them to easier classes because you get players like, uh, like me well, it's or all even... recommendations. Well, yeah, yeah, or or you it's can't like tell them what to play. They're just asking, like, I don't know anything about the game. What would you recommend? True, but you're helping them make their character is the idea yeah. that I have behind this. So, why I disagree with that is that you're pushing them towards a certain direction. But I know there are quite a few players who wouldn't like this. I know that I started out as a magic user in first edition, a wizard in D and D five e. And a, lot, and a few new players are wizards as well. I've also seen where players have been pushed towards some of those simpler classes, and they didn't like it at all because they wanted the more com the more complex classes. Because well, you think that they are the kind of person who would be ready for that? Like maybe they could just handle more complex things. Then sure. Yeah, which but is it depends what... on the person. Exactly, which is why I try to. Uh, see what the person would like and what they'd want rather than the difficulty of a class because a new person can play a difficult class fairly well surprising at times or they could play a difficult class and play it at its baseline like hey i'm a wizard that means i'm a fireball dispenser right right <laughs> so they, they can still be okay definitely not as good as their class could be but it's a game to have fun in and they're not and they're not expected to be some creative amazing person they just like the yeah options. and that's the thing i would worry if i recommended a class that i know is more challenging to a new player i would worry that it would be too much for them and for that reason they would stop playing which again, means i recommended the wrong class to you remember your mom when she played with us oh she God. played a bard yeah yeah a bard is not a class i would necessarily recommend to a new player because it is it, it there's so many different directions that you could go into mm -hmm. it's honestly overwhelming i kind of feel like you need to kind of know the structure of the game before you play a bard and then on top of that there's these amazing role play opportunities so you have to balance like the combat versus the role play and i think it was too much for your mom honestly and that's part of the reason why she stopped playing I think that's fair. So... I think I think a lot of it was, uh, yeah, I didn't judge the person accurately, which is why the method that I had at first that I made up years ago, it, it didn't factor in knowing the person or knowing the player. And that's the hardest part, especially if it's a new person. I mean, if it's a family member, you should know a bit more. Right. Should, but if you've but... never met them before, then you're kind of relying on their own judgment. So how do you help a new person that you have... A, never met before is interested in D and D or and is or you just don't know them that well and they're trying to get some guidance as to which class to play yeah um i think you kind of have to break down like well what do i mean by melee combat what does that look like what is it like to to play like a melee person oh and if you're watching on youtube my cats are going to be here um they, they, they the like to be part thing. of the podcast too yes yes yeah, it's a given. Um, but what is it like to play a melee class? I mean, kind of describe that versus a magic class. Oh, that's that's very uh, simple. We actually went through it in our example. Would you like to be a melee person who gets right in front in their face and deals a whole bunch of damage and just, like, right next to them fights? Uh -huh. I mean, you, you could put it more elegantly than that, but or eloquently than that, but... Alita yeah, or would works. you like to kind of cast spells? But then I think um, you have other categories, too. Like, even within melee, you have different kinds of fighters. So you could be, like, the sneaky fighter, which is the rogue. Or you could be the tanky person, which would be, like, the fighter. Yeah, yeah, and that's be, why... I... You could be, like, the crazy person who doesn't do a lot of talking, but, you True. know, wears a loincloth. And, <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I'm I have the divergent... Yeah, that's why I have the divergent questions, and you try to figure right, out like yeah, what yeah, the yeah. person wants, and that's why those questions are there to try to uh, 
to try to get a gauge on the person and what their true interests are. Because in by that point, you'll find out if they want to be a damage dealer in melee, if they want to be a tank, if they want to be a weird, screaming, crazy person. Right, yeah. Do you want to Barbarian. be the healer? But even then, what kind of healer do you want to be? Do you want to be up front hitting things while you're healing people? Do you want to be broken like crazy? Well, then be a cleric. Do you want to be like playing the mandolin and singing songs while you're healing? Then you should be a bard. Um, I I'm sure like once you start listing these things, something's going to jump out of them and be like, oh, that sounds cool. Exactly. And if this doesn't work, uh, there is a last ditch one that I have, which has has a potential to backfire. But if, if they've gone through these questions and they're invested, the last ditch one is to go through every single class, which <laughs> I would not recommend as a start off because... That, what, just like, just like play through them all? Yeah, yeah, just like, all right, so we'll go class by class, and we'll see if you like them. If you say that you don't like them, we'll just put them aside. If you're interested, we'll, we'll table it as a maybe. How about that? So there's Barbarian. What Barbarians do, and you kind of give a general gist of what a overall Barbarian is. Granted, yes, Barbarians have archetypes, same with Rogues and everything else, but you want to give an idea of what the base class does. Because if you can tell them what the base class does... Eh, they can fill in the other holes and details later. Mm -hmm. But they have to be satisfied with the core of what they're doing. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, what do you think of the idea of maybe building from a backstory into a class? Because I feel like some characters, or not characters, some players come in with like, you know, I want this particular backstory and... I want it to fit, like, the certain feel. Do you ever have people that come to you with that, and then you recommend them a class? Somewhat. I mean, this is more of an advanced player technique. Uh, I don't know. Do you remember our friend? I don't know if I should give names on this podcast. We'll, ta we'll call him Tom. <laughs> but Tom was always really into, um, like, flashy characters, like the samurai or the pirate or, you know, the Kensai master. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. all these ridiculous things. Do you remember? Yeah, I do. Do you know who I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. Yeah, and then he would kind of build a character around that idea. Like that concept. Mm -hmm. But he kept changing it, it like every other session. Him. Yeah, no, he didn't have a true build. And in 3.5, that wasn't as great. But, um, yeah, no, what, what you're talking about is a more advanced way to create a character. So we, we had before addressed how to choose a... Uh, class in D and D five e for newer players and how to help the newer players get those classes. But for more more experienced players, going by a backstory is actually my preferred way of doing it. Granted, you you could go with another way, but my favorite is building a character from their life up. Let's say they're in a small rural town and uh, they went through a harrowing experience when they were a younger child. And as they uh, worked through their life, they started to work at a blacksmith and the town got raided and they went to defend the town, picking up the nearest weapon, which instilled in them their ability to, I mean, they're a blacksmith, they've defended the town, they're protecting others, and instilled in them the desire to be a fighter class overall. And you could, and you could go by other backstory. How I generally do it is instead of going like at the start of their life, uh, more so, I go with skills, professions, and uh, yeah, backstory as to what they were, like an acolyte or a criminal, whatever you have in the D&D, &D, in, in the player's handbook, or wherever you would get those backstories. Because if you know if they're like a acolyte who has blacksmithing proficiencies and, um, and is a half-orc, you can craft an interesting story around this. You craft a story around it, and then you think of, what would this character logically be? If rather than, I have big charisma. I go warlock. Warlock go burr. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With Eldritch Blast. Oh, actually, that's a fun way to make a character. Uh, remind me so I don't forget. Stats. Mm. But go on. Oh, I was, I was opening up to you. If yeah, you so there's stats. a... Yeah. I, I think it's in first edition. Maybe advanced D&D. &D. Oh where you roll your stats first. 3d6 <laughs> in order. Yes, exactly. That's how you make your character, folks. 
I had a player. You can't decide. Okay, then the game's gonna decide for you. Yeah, I had a player recently ask after he chose a class, like, "Oh, I roll my stats. Do I put them down in order?" Like, no, you. But that's uh, so much fun, right? It <laughs> is fun. I still that's real life, though. Like, we don't get to choose our stats in real life. Oh, I still remember my thief that had like an eighteen dex, but three strength. Oh, it was how, a, how? Yeah, in first sense. edition, it was great, too, because first edition, all melee damage was done with uh, strength. So <laughs> it didn't need to, like, no damage. Wow. You can just sneak attack. That was, that was the funniest character. Didn't last long, but... Oh, no, you can... definitely wouldn't. A person with three strength probably couldn't walk very well, let alone well, he got challenged to fight a duel. in combat. Yeah, and that didn't work out well because uh, he had to accept it in a gladiatorial ring. And that one-on-one -on -one as a thief. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, it didn't work out well. So. Yeah, but that would be a fun way to to choose your class, I guess. If you're oh, desperate. it's really fun. Some of the best uh, players or games that I've had actually have been three d six in order because. Yeah. Like, none of this matters and is serious since I didn't choose it. And by the end, it's like a character who starts out with, I have Biggest Dickus as my name, the grandest barbarian in the land. And by the that end, That would be a great have... name for a dating website. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> <laughs> all, the, all the hot chicks and females would click on that. <laughs> Absolutely. Not that I would know. <laughs> as I tip my fedora. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, that 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 name's been a joke in the D and D community for a while. But yeah, yeah, uh, there's there's a lot of funny names like that where you could actually be attached to a character as they grow and become an interesting part of the party. And it, the idea with a joke character or a three d six in order character is actually the same. So that's a pretty fun way of doing it. Yeah, and I feel like it would kind of push you to try things that you wouldn't normally. Yeah. as well this if you have the stat block for it true true and this this does test your ability there is also the more advanced player method of i have a funny idea and i'm going with it for example oh yeah i want to be a clown that is meant to bring joy but is chronically depressed <laughs> yeah like what class is that <laughs> yeah and you're like i don't know i'm gonna be a bard but instead of instead of inspiring people, I just look at them and a tear comes out of my comes out of my eye, just a single tear, and they are inspired to make me feel better. Like that's that's your entire character, making a silly character, or just being like, you know what'd be great? If I was a door. How does this work? I don't minor know. Minor illusion, right? Yeah, you minor illusion yourself constantly as a door whenever you move or you have a hat of disguise. You work with the DM to make some stupid concept work. I I mean, that, right. that's, yeah, that's a joke of my first character. The excellent do-getting Rohir, the fighter, the 35th character, block of soap. Like... <laughs> Well, I mean, if you're looking for a challenge, because I feel like the way a new player picks a class versus a veteran or someone who knows the game is very different. Oh, yeah. Veterans um, have figured out that it's more about your role play and choices that make the game rather than what class you choose. Class has an impact, but... No, class has a huge impact. It does, but your choices and your role play and your experience or expertise can mean more than any base class would if you have enough experience it can but i do still think the class that you pick is gonna kind of shape what choices you can make oh absolutely um, yeah, yeah yeah absolutely i agree with you 100 percent on that front but what other information or methodologies which you have on how to help a person pick a class in D and D five E because there's so many. Are we still talking new players or old players? Well, we've kind of jumped to both, so you can decide, and you should probably preface it with old or new, since we're into the ex ex extra types of methods. The main ones were already talked about. I think the more well, solid with the new ones. players, I would say, if if you are a viewer who's listening and you just don't know what class to pick, um. Like, just go do some research, read up on what each of the classes is, and then just, you know, take into account 
your own preferences. So do you want something that's a bit easier to play for a new player? Do you want something that's maybe a bit more challenging? Like, I can't make that judgment for you. You're going to have to make it for yourself. Um, so do keep that in mind. But just remember, whatever you pick, if you don't like it, you could play something else. So just yeah. pick what sounds appealing to you. You're not locked in or anything. You are very correct on that. Uh, new players have still retain the capability to read, so that's only they viable do. They for can new players. Do, but they've, yeah, they can do like internet research. Yeah, they can actually maybe understand. watch a couple sessions of uh, like people playing D anD D and kind of see, you know, try to get a feel for that type of class. I would not recommend some of my sessions for that a wizard. Would well, it... there, there's Critical Role. I mean, there, there's things out there. You could also go like the oh, ar yeah, yeah. the archetype route. So, like, instead of picking via class, like, maybe you look at all the classes and you're like, hmm, I'm not feeling it. You can look at the specific subclasses and maybe one of those will catch your eye. Like, maybe Rogue on paper is like, oh, this is boring. And then you see the Assassin archetype and you're like, oh, that's actually really cool. I want to play that. Yeah. So that's yeah. another route to go as well if, like, you've seen all the classes and you're just stuck. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And also keep in mind for newer players... How you see a class played is not how it should be played. That is just one way to play a class. That's something I get, uh, I see a lot, especially with newer players or people who have played less than five years of D&D. They, if they've watched Critical Role, hold themselves up to the Matt Mercer effect. Usually that's upon other DMs like, oh, you're not as good as Matt Mercer. You could do <laughs> voices better or whatever else. And the new DM's like, I'm just trying to figure out how to do a session. I don't even know what's going on anymore. <laughs> but they hold into yeah. a higher standard or stuff like that. You don't need to hold yourself to that higher standard either. So you can... Yeah, just pl just play yeah. however you want. Um, like if the role play is too intimidating at first, then just don't worry about that part. Just try to get a feel for your character. And that's the most important thing. You having a feel for your character and having fun with it. Because classes are very important. That is true. But what you do with it is even more important right but when it comes to like older players and i don't mean an age i mean an experience <laughs> um i think at that point they kind of know what kind of player they are so i think the way a power gamer picks a class is gonna be pretty different than just like a casual player um mm. so if you're a power gamer i mean do something cheesy like <laughs> Multiclassing is always an option if you want something a bit more out of the box, more challenging. Oh, um, then, yeah, you can <laughs> you can try to break the game. Multiclassing is super fun. Like if you're bored of just the regular class lineup, go multiclassing. I'd say. Or if you want to have a lot of fun, just saying, paladin, uh, hexblade, warlock. <laughs> just yeah, just there saying. you go. Exactly. Yeah, like do something just really crazy out of the box. Yeah, that'll give your DM a lot of fun. And you can roleplay that. So uh, you could be as edgy as you want, and everyone will be so concerned. And it will be, 90% of the time, a horrific ending for you. But it will be a fun ride that is worth it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't really think I have a lot of experience multi-classing myself, but that could be yeah, a I ton don't of think fun. Yeah, I do think you do. Multi-classing can be very fun. I think, Actually, uh, there was that one. There was that one character I had, who was uh, Eldritch Knight. Uh, oh, you're talking about the three point five character and three point yeah, five. five character. Yeah, you prestige. Prestige is a bit different than multi. Was I a wizard too? I think I was yeah, a wizard. you were a wizard, uh, abjurant champion, Eldritch Knight. Yeah, yeah the, that the... was like one of the best characters I've ever had in terms of power ability. <laughs> It's so much fun. So for people who are just in, uh, who have just been in five E, three point five was an era that if you knew the system, you could make something absolutely destructive and busted. There were also these things called prestige classes. Prestige classes are, well, the best way to put it is: imagine in five E, you needed to have uh, level five in a fighter class, and you needed to have these two feats which in 5e can only be possible if you're a human but or, or a variant class from Tasha's. But let's just say that you met these qualifications. Now, you could go into a prestige class that is only available if you hit those base requirements. Instead of multi-classing now, it's just, hey, do you have a 13? And that class is the main stat? 
go ahead. Or does your DM even care about that 13 requirement? Just bleh, go there. No, they still have that in 5th, but it's like for feats and stuff. They don't have prestige classes. No, no, I, I just meant like the stat requirement for certain things. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying like you would need feats and you would need certain levels in certain classes to get your prestige classes. That's what you That sounds like fun. Five. That's 3.5 like for you. you're checking things off your list. I, I love 3.5. I miss it. <laughs> well, the problem is is that if you don't know the 30 books worth of content, you're probably okay, going to we'll make have yourself it, We'll optimal. have an additions discussion. Ugh. I, I don't know. I'd have to look at the schedule. Like, there are pros but and cons. We could cons. save that. Yes, yes. There are pros yeah, and yeah, cons. Yeah. But back to 5e. Back to 5e. Um, making a character in multi-classing is extraordinarily fun. You could do what I think Puff and Force did. Actually, a lot of people have done this, where... <laughs> You make a character, he called it Absurd, who is a level one fighter, who went to uh, dabble and to understand that he had some draconic bloodline magic. But then he went on to realize that he had a edgy side to him after his parents died. And he became, he took a level one rogue. And then he was met by a patron in order to save the bakery. And he now yeah. worships Cthulhu. And, and yes, yeah, like, you, you're, you're a level you one in everything, one level you? in yeah. every class. <laughs> So it's new like, yes, players, yes, if you can't decide, just try them all. Don't don't do that. That's bad. <laughs> that's actually bad. Oh, that'd be so funny. There are a few uh, wrong ways to play Dungeons and Dragons, and I would say that is a wrong way because imagine if it you're... is wrong, but oh, you get a God, sampler. No. You get a little sampling of every single class, and then <laughs> by the end of the campaign, when you're technically level twenty, but also technically only level one. You might know what you want to play at that point. Can you imagine a level 13 character in a group just like, what? Are, all right, so I'm a 13th level fighter. I'm a battle master with all my stuff. What are you? I'm a 13th level wizard. That's a necromantic specialist with many undead at my beck and call. What are you? I have first level spells. Yes. <laughs> like, wait, it's what? It's like the college major who um, yeah. keeps switching majors. <laughs> <laughs> and their and parents are still paid for, for like 10 years and they just won't graduate. <laughs> won't graduate with anything more than an associate. Yeah, I'm exactly. Just, I'm still but trying boy, to find my really passion. They were really sure about that associates by the time they got it because they tried it all. Or they'll just have been like, man, college is a scam. <laughs> well, then you can't decide anything. I think a lot of things are a scam. Yeah, yeah. D&D's a scam when you can't decide. So new players just make a decision. Make a decision and or, stick with it. Stick with the sunken cost fallacy. Yeah, and Can't Luke, you can now. go with your strategy, Kyle. You narrow it down to a couple, and then you stick them in a hat, and then you pull out a random one. If you can't make a decision, just yeah, pick it random. You, you can always roll a die. That's that's. Oh, there's good also one. like look at what other people are playing in the party, and that can help you decide too if oh, you want to like fill basing. in a specific role. Yeah, that's a big one we didn't talk about. Yeah, that's actually a very big one. So this is a more middling. It could be for new players or for advanced players. I personally despise this method because. Oh I, really? I, I love I this method. <laughs> well, Why are we so different, Kyle? Ah. <laughs> How are we married? Eh. Anyways, <laughs> eh. that's how we're married yep eh? it's it, it's by a strong connection of eh. but because we live in the same house that's why we're married exactly and we're and we're legally joined by law so can cost fallacy stick with it but right <laughs> uh, no but um see, well seeing what a group is lacking on the surface seems like a good idea because then you're getting good spread of skills and abilities but the problem is if you stick a new player into that role then they don't know what they want they don't know what they want to play they play a class and the grass is always greener on the other side right so you yeah, maybe are... don't do this with a new player yeah yeah with a new player like let's say you stick them as we'll go stereotyping all the way as a cleric so they'll heal you oh, all. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's usually what needs to be filled is the cleric, so, or the healer slot. So they start healing people, and they see, oh, man, the rogue does such cool stuff. Oh, the fighter's able to do these cool action surges. Oh, the wizard can, like, make a wall of webs, and we, we run away so they can't follow us. I mean, all I can do is heal. 
this is which terrible. is amazing it's like the best skill exactly and then if you're the wizard then uh, then you're like oh man every time i'm hit or a gust of wind comes over i just fall over and i go unconscious i can't do anything i can't play the game at least the cleric's always up the grass is always greener on the other side so that's well, they could I... have that problem regardless of what they pick though well they could but i think it's more embellished with uh them being forced quote unquote oh no look i wouldn't role. force a new player into a role that they really didn't well, that, want that's, that's but why... it is something if like you're having trouble that could be a factor to take into account. True, but I'm saying the, the quote unquote for force is because the player isn't actually forced. You've just said, hey, could you fill this role? And they say, oh, yeah, that's cool. But later on, they feel like they were tricked or forced into this not cool role or this role that they don't or they don't like because they didn't have a choice in it. They didn't really choose that class. So, I mean, it's an OK way to do it with an experienced player. But I would say with a new player don't have them fill well you can you can present it as an option and I, I mean like with 5e you would never be forced into a single class like that like even with healer like you know we're kind of low on heals so if you pick a class that has that as an option that could be really cool for the party so then they have the choice of cleric druid uh bard etc yeah, but a lot of it's in presentation too. If if you are going along that line of uh, that line of thinking of hey, we're low on healers, obviously that person needs to heal. They've already put it into their mind. They're not going to be the cleric that looks down and says, "I do have heals, but I could also cast damage." Why would I heal you, peasant? And <laughs> get the rogue can do damage because the paladin can do damage. They could play a paladin. That's yeah. a, that's a very that's a very contrasting option from like uh, a druid. Well, maybe not a well, no. I'd say it's pretty different from a bard too. But they would still have options, and at least you've given them something to go off of. Because I feel like with a lot of new players, it's just there's too many options, and they really need you to actually narrow it down for them. I, I think that there are some classes that new players should avoid. I, I do agree with you. That oh, there are some difficulties. you do agree yes. with that. Unless they really want those classes. Right. The classes that they should avoid are the classes that don't have a core. Now, what I mean by this is like fighters, obviously you go fight, whack, you hit. Barbarians, you whack and hit. Those are simple. But even wizards have a core. They have a core of, I focus on my spells. This is what I am. Everything else does not matter. Same with clerics to an extent. Paladins are really pushing it. Rangers, you don't see a lot of new players as rangers, or at least good rangers, because they have so much going on. Same with monks, and same with other, uh, same with a few other classes like bard, especially. Bard, not only do you have to focus on your spells, but you have to focus on your skills, since you get a lot of them. You also have jack of all trades, you have expertise, and you also have bardic inspiration. So your core is a bunch of these different things, which is really good, but it's hard to wrap your head around while well, wizards is just spells mm -hmm. so i'd yeah, actually that's a good point yeah i'd yeah. actually recommend a wizard over a bard to a new player and a wizard i put yeah. on the table druid it's more iffy because they have wild shape which is okay i guess that's one factor though yeah ranger has their own specific ranger secondary archetypes that they get from being a ranger which is kind of weird like hey did you, did you go in the base PHP or did you go Tasha's? Well, of course, I was told to go Tasha's. All right, so your favorite foe? It's like, yes. All right, concentration. Are you doing that or are you doing Hunter's Mark? Oh, uh, um, oh aside from spells, uh, what about your extra attack? Have you got that into play? Oh, what, and uh -huh. your archetype on top of it. Like, you're putting a lot of things. While well, wizards, even as a core, are augmenting their spells. Same with fighters are augmenting their core abilities. While well, some classes are just they have too many facets for newer players. okay so if you had to recommend like four or five classes for new players what would they be i would recommend uh, obviously barbarian fighter um i don't know about a rogue a rogue maybe i feel like oh uh, i don't know everyone knows what a rogue is at least I'd go you with could, six. You could like refer them to like Arya Stark from Game of Thrones. Yeah, I'd go. I'd go with six. I'm gonna cheat a little bit. Uh, okay. I would say <laughs> fighter. I just barbarian, came up with a number on the spot, so fighter, barbarian, rogue, sorcerer, warlock, 
wizard. The reason why I have okay. those three kind of with each other is that warlocks, they're a little bit weird. You got a lot of cantrips. You have, like, your two spells per short rest. But, again, they may have failed gypped for the two spells per short rest. It's a lot of cool roleplay opportunity, but... It depends if they oh, feel hey, only two spells per short rest means you only have to think about two spells. True, and you only have somebody known, but then they have invocations as well. Yeah, uh, Warlocks I don't actually... think it's overwhelming, mm. which is nice. And you have the really cool role-playing, and you can have some fun with them there as the DM. True, but again, you're starting to fray at the edges. Not quite, not quite there, but you're really starting to fray. Sorcerers, actually, you kind of start to fray as well, because... Not only, uh, yes, you think that, oh, they only what have these What do you mean by spells. fray at the like, edges? Th there's too many aspects to keep track of. Like how we talked about with the bard, how you have skills, um, bardic inspiration, and spells. Well, warlocks yeah. have spells, invocations, and eh, kind of their patron or some other stuff. But mainly it's, it's spells and invocations. Um, sorcerers have the same problem where they have spells and meta magic they have two different resource pools that they need to keep track of and they're both very important so they're kind of complex and intricate in order to work together and it doesn't seem like you have the same reward since you only know so many spells and why sorcerers fall back upon just fireballing things because what's good what's more reliable good old fireball or fly i mean fireball is always going to be useful unless you're facing someone immune to fire so fireball it is well wizards they uh, have a lot of spells to go over, but that's it. They don't have extra resources. They don't have an extra feature to really look at. I mean, you have Arcane Tradition, which is you just recharging your spells. But really, yeah, it's just your spells. Yeah, but the thing spells. with Wizards is that you potentially have access to all the spells. Mm-hmm. And for a new player, that can be extremely overwhelming. Even just figuring out what one spell does accurately can be kind of a lot. And then on top of that, you are expected to think creatively as a wizard. Because you have a lot of uh, like CC spells, um, like environmental spells, things like that. I'd, I'd so if say you're that... not able to do that... I think I, you're going to struggle with wizard a bit. I say that optimally you uh, think like that as a wizard. You're not expected to. I have seen wizards just do straight damage. And they have not been evocation wizards. So you can play a wizard in a different manner. And even then, let's say a new player is joining. First off, they're not going to be playing like a high level campaign. So you won't have a ton of spells. Let's say you're even third level. You have 10 spells. Which at first seems like a lot. But if you compare to a sorcerer and a warlock, they have to go over every spell because it's permanent. That decision mm, they are stuck true. with. So they're still going to look at all the spells. And I, and that's I didn't, true. Yeah. Yeah, and I didn't list any divine casters for that reason. Because you're going to have to look at every single spell. Sorry, divine casters. But if you're going to play a cleric and you have to look through like 30 spells each level, um, I well, wouldn't recommend that. Well, not just that, but think of all the different subtypes for uh, a cleric they have oh. like 11 different subclasses and you get them all at level one that you have to it's, make a decision it's ridiculous on. i mean yeah. i think cleric is one of the most overwhelming classes in 5e honestly i, I wouldn't even mm -hmm. know what to do with it yeah druid is i'd say more friendly to a new player than cleric because druid at least has well some weird wonky spells there are a few core spells that you stick with and a lot of the other ones are just novelties and for wild shape, it's, oh, I can be an animal. And you, you're easily able to tangibly think, I can be a cat because it's something from real life. So it's... Right, it's, exactly. Yeah, I'd say And okay. you have the crutch of, oh, I'm a druid, so I can just be true neutral and not really have to make any decisions so I can learn the game from <laughs> no. an easier perspective. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I hate when yeah. players do that. I don't have to put in the effort. So I'll well, just... you know, they're overwhelmed by other things. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Or they just want to sit back and watch role play and slowly get into it. That's that's okay. Exactly. You yeah. You, you yeah. don't need a class alignment excuse for that. But well, it's just mm. an idea. A uh, druid was one of the first classes I played, and yeah. I didn't think it was overwhelming. I think druid's also it's pretty nice. newbie friendly. It, it's just the idea of every day looking at every spell and readjusting it is a bit much. Yeah, it depends like how much you want to put up with as a new player. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, it sounds like honestly most of the classes could be at least somewhat new player friendly. Yeah, most can. Uh, I would say 
like a paladin is a bit too much i'd say for like it's possible but again it has a bit too much mm-hmm. um probably not bard oh we've already um, said no to bard n- not, not ranger, ranger. Mm-hmm. what else is there monk definitely not monk. yeah monk i highly do not, not recommend monk. a new player plays monk almost every yeah, new monk player is wants a lot. to every new player that i have seen play monk well not every but i would say the vast majority around 90 percent end up being confused and unsure as they constantly want to because because monk also not only does it have a lot of things that it frays at the seams but it's a uh, very dependent class upon one the campaign that you run because your key's great and you could blow it all in a few rounds but you need short rests and uh, two uh you uh, would need to know how to use your key properly and when to use it because if you don't use your key it's like oh well i wasted my resource I, I failed because I didn't utilize it. But if you don't have any key left, you feel completely worthless because you're just like, well, I'll just punch and do nothing, so whatever. But uh, with, with with your key, you can also, you have the choice. Do I want to deal a lot of damage? Do I want to stun? Do I want to be a great off tank? Or do I want to dash and disengage and move around? There's so many options as a monk that it's just, and none of them are always optimal. You would mm-hmm. think damage is always optimal, but you could defend and keep uh, like three players alive in the back by just taking the dodge action, your your what your patient defense, and while attacking, like that's amazing. That's pretty good, and you could be great, but it doesn't feel amazing. Monks never feel that wonderful because they don't have an area that they excel in better than others. And monks are great for an experienced player, but for a new player. I have seen it time and time again just fall short to where they're like, I don't like this class, or I don't feel like I'm enjoying the game. I, I would highly never recommend a new player to to uh, to play Monk. Like, that is that is on the bottom tier for a yeah. new player. But every new player wants to, because they're cool. So. <laughs> oh, they're extremely cool, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, for those of you listening, hopefully we've helped you narrow down your choices a little bit here if you're new. And if you're an experienced player, I mean, just do whatever the heck you want. <laughs> you probably don't need our help. I hope that we've also given some options to help uh, you pick new classes. Yes. Multi-class. <laughs> or just pl- play something you haven't played before would be my One level in everything. Well, don't do that. I mean, unless you really just want to have a ton of fun. All right. Well, the cats are overlords say that it is time to end this podcast, so... Yes, so where can they find us, Kyle? They can find us on many places. Levelupcorner.com is, is where you blog. can find... What? It's our blog website, levelupcorner.com. Yep, that is where you can find articles if you wish to read. If you want to uh, find us on uh, the uh, Twitters, then you can go to... Uh, uh, well, at Level Up Corner. I know, very surprising. And on yes. Twitch, Level Up Corner as well right also instagram facebook uh we also have a patreon so if you want to support what we do support our work uh definitely check that out uh if you're watching on youtube all the links will be in the description box down below and yeah give this video a thumbs up if you liked it Ah! (laughs) sorry i had to say it i know people hate it but like and subscribe so that we can reach more people exactly exactly. that notification bell so that you always get updated but seriously do leave a comment down below and tell us how you pick your classes that's something that i would like to see because while we are two uh, individuals with many opinions you also are an individual with opinions and i would love to hear how you come up with your next character or help a new player all right we'll see you next time everyone Bye. Bye.